Chief guest, Mr. Pawan Chaudhary, Managing Director of Wag in India, our Honorable Advisor, Professor Kamlesh Misra, respected deans, faculty members, and dear students at the platform lecture series on the topic, Wisdom, the Source of Wealth and Power. Well, before we begin with our session, I would request our student Nitya to welcome our Honorable Chief Guest, Mr. Pawan Chaudhary and Professor Kamlesh Misra with a bouquet. by Ansel University, where eminent thought leaders and industry stalwarts come together to give insightful talks on a number of issues affecting our world. We shall begin with the session with a welcome note from our honorable advisor at Ansel University, Professor Kamlesh Misra. Professor Kamlesh Misra graduated with master's degree in economics from Allahabad University, India. After completing his PhD, from Northeastern University, Boston. He taught there as a lecturer until 1990. He did his advanced training in financial management of local and regional governments from Howard Institute for International Development, Howard University, Cambridge, USA, under an USAID funding. He served as an economist at the Center for Social and Urban Research, Pittsburgh University, from 1990 to 94 when he returned to India to join as HDFC Associate Professor at the National Institute of Public Finance and Policy, New Delhi. Dr. Misra is a well-known and reputed strategist and innovative leader in conceiving, organizing, and managing educational and research organizations. He combines in him qualities of vision, building, organizing, motivating, and leading teams to perform at their peak level. He is well regarded as a thoughtful leader and speaker on the formulation and implementation of corporate strategies, knowledge, and innovation management. He is known for creating some of the most successful business models in the education sector without compromising on the ethical dimensions of teaching as a profession. He has held the position of director of several well-known institutions in India. He is the founding vice chancellor of Oro University, Surat, and currently he holds the position of full-time advisor to Ansel University. Strategic management, public finance, urban finance, financial management, and economic restructuring are the areas of his special interest. Dr. Misra is author of six books and has written over 50 papers in refereed journals. Well, I invite him for his welcome note. So please. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. It's a nice way to start the day. Uh, let me take this uh, opportunity to welcome all of you for this, to be part of this lecture series. Uh, we are very grateful for Mr. Paman Chaudhary to have accepted our invitation to be the speaker for the day today. I am intrigued by the topic that he is going to be speaking on because that's something that gets very close to us as, as teachers. Okay. Stand close, sort of. And his wisdom, the source of all right. wealth and power in the world. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to taking something out of this, this right. uh, talk. But when we, we begin to think about the whole concept of wisdom, we begin to get a little confused at times. Well, what is wisdom? How do we define wisdom? Uh, probably we are more tuned to knowledge, and we are not able to move beyond the concept of knowledge in the realm of university system, because I think wisdom is the stage higher than what knowledge is. Uh, I'm not an expert in this subject, but we all have thoughts. And when I begin to think about what constitutes wisdom, how do you, how do you know that the person is wise? Obviously knowledge is important. 
But if we were to combine knowledge and experience and the, our own ability to navigate through the uncertainties of life, its ups and downs, probably we would reach that point of wisdom, at least the starting point. And that's what we try and do, you know, uh, how do we move from a state of acquiring knowledge to a state of becoming wise? And what are those things that really make that difference? Because if we are able to reach that point, then probably it is possible for us, as we will hear, to acquire certain powers that can lead us to a point which probably we are not able to imagine and think when we think from the point of view of just knowledge. So I'm, I'm looking forward. Again, welcome, uh, uh, Pranamji. We are looking forward and thank you for coming. Can I speak from here only? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to introduce you all to our guest of honor, the very dynamic Mr. Pavan Chaudhary. Uh, Mr. Pavan Chaudhary is the managing director of Wild in India, a leading French multinational in the field of healthcare. He is also an active member on the worldwide strategy, planning, effort, and spearheads its MNA initiative in India. He has earlier held important positions in marketing and strategy at Dabur, Cadilla, Lintas, among others. He is the author of The Rx Factor, a seminal work on healthcare marketing and strategy. His other path-breaking book, How a Good Person Can Really Win, has won the Eric Hoffer Award and Reader's Choice Award in 2015. He has co-authored The Hygiene Guide, Room and Groom with Kiran Bedi and Lal Bahadur Shastri, Lessons in Leadership with Congressman Anil Shastri. He hosts the nation-building TV show, Hum Aise Kyu Hain on DD where he raises social reform, civic, and healthcare issues. He writes the column, Mera Gaon, Mera Desh, for the Times of India, and has served as editor of the magazine, Pharma Trends Today. The Times of India once rated him amongst the four most thinkers of the world. A highly regarded management strategist, Mr. Pavan coaches leaders on life and management skills, and sits on the advisory boards of some of the most respectable organizations of India. He has been awarded with the Global Leadership Award by the Bhartiya Vidya Peet University. I request our Honorable Chief Guest to please uh, enhance our capabilities and thoughts by his insightful talks on the topic, Wisdom, the Source of Wealth and Power. Please, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Kamlesh Mishra, Dr. Pooja, Dr. Rawat, and other members in the faculty. I am also a student. Like you study architecture, management, design, and what else? Engineering also is here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So anything I've missed? No, no, no. So similarly, I study wisdom. I am a student of wisdom. What is, what is this wisdom? Can anybody explain what is the meaning of wisdom? Or what is an equivalent word for wisdom which would help us understand uh, this term first? Yeah, go ahead, please. Love for knowledge. Love for knowledge, okay. I would say it's ability to differentiate between wrong and right. The ability to differentiate between wrong and right. Anything else? Applying Anybody else? Applying the knowledge. Applying application of knowledge. Anybody else? Having your own perceptions. Having your own perceptions. Anybody else? Yeah, go ahead. At the end. Knowledge that is gained by experience. Yeah. So, in many ways, most of you are right. Because wisdom in Hindi translates into a word called, word called Vivek, which is as difficult to understand as wisdom because we don't understand Vivek. So, the right word for wisdom, I feel, is Samajdari. Samajdari, you understand? Samajdari is wisdom. So, the ability to, uh, to, to find the true nature of things and then taking decisions which are right and lasting. 
So there is a virtue component also there. There is an enduring quality of decision component there. And there is a component of understanding the true nature of things. So this is wisdom. And before I start my talk, I'll, uh, I'll respond to one point which uh, Dr. Mishra made. That is wisdom the source of all wealth and knowledge, all wealth and power? No. All is something which is not there in our topic. Wisdom is one source of wealth and power. There are other sources also and some anti-forces of wisdom also may lead you to wealth and power but maybe that wealth and power will not last long or will not give you the peace of mind which you need to have when you have such things like wealth and power. Okay. So, wisdom not only looks after my good, my interest, it looks after the public good also. So there is a balance also in wisdom. And in, from the perspective of wisdom, if you want to grow in one area of life, you have to grow simultaneously in all areas of life. For example, if you have to grow uh, materially, then you should also grow psychologically, you should also grow physically, you should also grow uh, uh, socially, and you should also grow, uh, grow spiritually. Okay. So, wisdom means this balanced growth. So balance is very important in wisdom and I'll share with you three aspects of balance, three types of balance which are required in wisdom. The first balance I'll call equanimity. Equanimity, you understand what is the meaning of equanimity? Good. Any English English literature students here or no? Okay. Anyway, but I'm sure your vocabulary is good. What is the meaning of equanimity? Okay. Equanimity raises your immunity to what is happening around you so that it does not disturb, disturb your internal state. So failure will not or criticism will not sting you Success will not go to your head. Okay. Failure will not depress you. That means you become unflappable. Aspas kushbi hota rahe, aap tatastra hoye. Is this clear? That means you become more and more immune to any ups and downs in your environment and you say you stay centered. Is this clear? So this is one aspect of balance. Ye bhi ek ka balance hai, santulan hai. So the other type of balance is walking on the middle path, avoiding extremes. There's a couplet, Samal jane do meera ki thirakti payal aur gautam ke sadhe paon jara behek jane do. Means what? Meera Thodi frivolous hai, usko samalne do. Gautam thode jada serious hai, unko thoda sa thirakne do, thoda baikne do. Are you getting my point? Avoiding extremes, walking in the middle path. So, you will neither be uh, cowardly, nor you will be rash, you will be courageous. Middle path. You will neither be miserly nor will you be extravagant. You will be modest or you will be liberal, you can say. Okay, okay in your expenditures. Fair enough in your expenditures. You will neither be obsequious, that means uh, flattery, nor will you be arrogant. Okay in your expenditures. Fair enough in your expenditures. You will neither be obsequious, that means uh, flattering, nor will you be arrogant, you will be friendly with me. So you will be in the middle. You will avoid extremes. Is this point clear? Yes. Yeah? You will start walking in the middle. You will not be uh, a buffoon. You will not be too serious. 
यू विल बी गुड ह्यूमर्ड ये समझ में आ रहा है पॉइंट कि नहीं कि हम एक्सट्रीम पे नहीं जाएंगे रावत साहब को तो मोहल्ले में ऑलरेडी है आप लोगों को आ रहा है कि नहीं समझ बताओ हम एक्सट्रीम पे नहीं जाएंगे हम मिडिल पाथ पे चलेंगे ये सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ बैलेंस एंड द थर्ड टाइप ऑफ बैलेंस and this type of balance you know the second type of balance where you don't go on the extremes is also summarized with another beautiful couplet which i like na ho itne naram ki koi bhi chaba jaye aur na ho itne garam ki koi bhi chhu na paaye so phir bhi madhya mein aao matlab madhya mein aao this is what buddha and aristotle said madhya mein aao ab ek aur tarah ka balance bhi hai to do tarah ke balance hue ek to when outside conditions do not disturb me internally second is i do not walk on either extreme i am in the middle path and third is what confucius said this is a different type of balance this goes beyond buddha beyond aristotle these first two types of balance balance you this third type of balance which i am going to talk about this balances relationships between you and others so confucius says the younger brother should be respectful to the elder brother but the and the elder brother should be kind to the younger brother because what is saying ki agar sara load younger brother pe hi dal diya ki respectfully hona hai तो वो रिलेशनशिप लोच खा जाएगी इट विल बी अ लॉप साइडेड रिलेशनशिप सो आई हैव टू बैलेंस इट आई हैव टू ब्रिंग सम जस्टिस इन इट सो दैट इट विल बी मोर इंड्योरिंग सो दिस इज वॉट इज सेंग अबाउट हजबेंड एंड वाइफ दैट द वाइफ शुड बी ओबीडियंट टू दी हजबेंड एंड द हजबेंड शुड बी टेल मी Wow, who who said that? <laughs> Please stand up, stand up. Let's let's give her a hand. You know, Confucius and what's your name? Akansha. Meet Akansha. So, Confucius and Akansha have caught the issue. <laughs> that wife to obedient ho jayegi, lekin husband garbar hai ye door door jayega. Dusri ladies mein interested hoega, isliye usko loyal banao. Okay, I get my point. Getting my point. So, Confucius, sorry, relationships ka maram samaj gaya. Or usne bola ki balance is not only with between in yourself. I will balance your relationships also. So this is the third type of balance. All these balances constitute an important part of wisdom. and the other side of wisdom is what one of your faculty said <coughs> that is the 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 shade of wisdom which is related with virtue wisdom says that virtue should win okay i'll give you two short stories and then i'll come to this point so that this sticks in your memory one real life example i'm telling you from sagar sagar is a place in madhya pradesh there were two businessmen one was manohar lal jain and the other was sharad agarwal so manohar lal jain was an unprincipled kind of businessman and sharad agarwal was a principled businessman they were living next to each other dono neighbors the Manohar Lal Jain wanted to buy a land from Sharad Agarwal, which Sharad was not willing to sell. Okay. So Manohar Lal Jain, what he did, he called up Raju Bhatnagar. You heard of Raju Bhatnagar? Okay. Raju Bhatnagar was a mafia so, where in Uttar Pradesh. He called up Raju Bhatnagar and said, Raju, you come to Sagar. you kidnap sharad agarwal son and i will come in hostage release negotiation stage 
get the son out, get you a massive ransom, and in during that time, I will also be able to convince Sharad Sharad Agarwal to sell that land to me. So Raju Bhatnagar, with his gang of mafia souls, came to Sagar and was waiting for the right opportunity to strike. One evening he got it. So they entered Sharad Agarwal's house, which was right next to Manohar uh, Lanjan's house. They entered that house. Caught that little boy who was about 8-10 years of age in front of Sharad Agarwal. Guns were drawn. Sharad Agarwal protested, but they were leaving with the boy. And all this noise, you know, made the inside door of the bedroom open. And an old man walked out in dhoti kurta. He was Sharad Agarwal's uncle who was just visiting him for one day from Uttar Pradesh. The moment Raju Bhatnagar saw that man, he said, Bauji, because he was his school principal in, in, uh, in, in a village. And he, he, of course, used to admire this principal, but never uh, stayed out of touch with him because of the path he had taken of crime, etc. He said, Bauji. And he immediately recognized Raju Bhatnagar and said, what are you doing, Raju? And he started scolding Raju. And Raju was suddenly from that big a mafia, so he had become like a kid. Okay. And he explained the whole story to them that what has happened. And apologized, took 51 rupees from his pocket, <laughs> put it in the child's t-shirt, goes crying, okay. And said, now we'll go, sorry, Ravi, I did not know that he's your grandson and so on. As he started trying to walk out, his fellow gangster said, Raju Bhaiya, we have taken so much risk. We will have to bribe the police. How can we go without the booty? Guess what they did? They went to Manohar Lal's house, picked up his son and left. So, when you, when you team up with the wrong kind of people, eventually they will cheat you. This is human nature. This is their nature. And sometimes nature also hits back. There was a man, he was standing next to a wishing well. Wishing well, you know what you mean? A coin peko wish mango puri hoti hai, asa kehta hai. So he selected a coin from his wallet, <coughs> threw it in the well, asked for a beautiful wife. Immediately a beautiful woman appeared in, uh, next to him and said, hello darling. He was very happy. He took her to the uh, church, got married immediately, and then took her around the town, showing her off to her friends that what a beautiful wife I've got. Then reached home in the evening. It was time to go to bed. That lady took off her makeup. She was 85, 90 year old. She took off her wig, all craggy hair, scraggy hair, and she was looking like a witch. And she said, he, he, was, he was aghast. He said, I've been cheated. I asked for a beautiful woman and this is what I get. She said, no, you have not been cheated. You thought through a false coin. Now come to bed. That means, aapne khota sikka peka tha. Okay? So, point is what? That nature also hits back. But wisdom doesn't believe in this. Wisdom believes that the good person, principled person, and the unprincipled person both will be blessed equally or cursed equally by nature. My parents used to tell me that a chai ki jeet hoti hai. Okay. So I was brought up with that sanskar. When I started my corporate sector journey, I was thrashed badly because people were not playing by the rules. I was thrashed badly and then I realized that my parents who were extremely well-read people, they used to say, achai ki jeet hoti hai, ram jeete the dekha. But unho ne koi ladaiyan nahi ladi thi. Wo ye sun ke bol rahe 
उनको किसी ने बोला होगा तो वो ये बोल रहे थे कि अच्छाई की जीत होती है जब मैंने लाइफ देखी तो मैंने देखा अच्छाई की जीत नहीं होती है अच्छे योद्धा की जीत होती है राम इसलिए नहीं जीते क्योंकि वो अच्छे थे राम इसलिए जीते क्योंकि वो अच्छे योद्धा थे बेहतर योद्धा थे तो वो युद्ध करने की कला भी आपको आनी चाहिए ये भी विजडम कहता है और विजडम ये कहता है कि वर्चुअस आदमी जो जो ईमानदार और वर्चुअस आदमी है वो बलवान भी होना चाहिए दैट मीन्स यू शुड बी अ शरीफ बलवान और विजडम आपको शरीफ बलवान बनने में मदद करता है और उस पर मेरी मेन स्टडी है कि शरीफ आदमी को कैसे बलवान बनाया जाए सो कीपिंग द कंस्ट्रेंट्स ऑफ टाइम इन माइंड आई थिंक आई विल स्टॉप हियर आई हैव इंट्रोड्यूस्ड यू टू विजडम आई हैव टोल्ड यू हाउ बैलेंस इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ विजडम आई हैव टोल्ड यू हाउ द एबिलिटी एबिलिटी टू कंपीट और स्ट्रगल With tact, it should be a tactful struggle. सिर्फ अच्छाई से जीत रही होगी योद्धा भी बनना होगा मतलब समझदारी भी होनी चाहिए आप में विच बैटल्स टू फाइट विच बैटल्स टू अवॉइड वेन टू डक वेन टू फायर एंड सो ऑन ऑल दिस थिंग्स आर दीज थिंग्स आई हैव एड्रेस्ड इन माई बुक्स एटसेट्रा एंड आई विल स्टॉप हियर टू सी इफ देर आर एनी क्वेश्चन कमिंग इफ देर एनी क्वेश्चन कमिंग विल हैव अ डायलॉग and uh, i'll be happy today all right so uh, we'll open the floor let me just uh, uh, catch on something that he said which was very intriguing uh, about the wishing well when he started the story i thought i'll try and make a wishing well somewhere on the campus <laughs> but at the end of the story i decided i'll not do it anymore <laughs> so uh, Let's open the discussion. If there are any questions, and please feel free. Uh, and I'm specifically looking at questions from the students. Sir, first of all, I would like to thank you for your pearls of wisdom. Uh, sir, I have a question. So you just uh, mentioned that wisdom believes that good and bad person should both be blessed or cursed equally. Now in Kedarna calamity, what happened? Many people who were young, many people who wanted to live their life, they also suffered. They also lo lost their lives. So, uh, do you justify that this thing happens? Okay. So I did not say that wisdom believes that good and uh, bad people are blessed equally. Wisdom knows through its experience. that there is no god sitting up there okay who is going to punish the bad person or who is going to uh, reward the good person we were discussing this in the morning and a truly wise person is non religious he goes into he may be a little spiritual but he goes into agnostic space agnosticism you understand a atheist means a person who doesn't believe in god theist means a person who believes in god agnostic is a person who doesn't know whether there is god or not so uh from the point of view of wisdom agnosticism is a better space to approach spirituality than even theism because theism will take you to the temple and it will make you uh, uh, chant mantras thinking that through the temple or through the mantra you will become closer to god you will only perhaps become closer to the priest by doing that aap purohit ke close chale jaoge lekin aap bhagwan agar hai to uske close jaoge ki nahi ye kehna mushkil hai second point You are saying that those people who were in the Kedarnath, that temple stampede, you are talking about. Okay. Why were? Why did they die? So there is this question is extremely loaded. 
because you are assuming that those were very principled and good people. By good, I mean a person for whom means are as important as ends. Okay, that's principled. Otherwise, unprincipled. So, just because I am doing some chanting of mantras or standing in a queue, in a huge queue, or I am chasing uh, 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 some rituals, that doesn't make me good. It just makes me ritualistic. I am of the opinion that tradition should be respected, but to be traditional is not so great. So, the assumption that those people who are standing in the queues in temples, they are good people, is in my view a loaded and perhaps wrong assumption. Because very soon you will see hundreds and thousands of very corrupt people standing in the queues of temples. Tell me why they will stand in the queues of temples? To deposit the 500 rupee notes which they have taken. Okay, and which they can't deposit in the bank, so they will say, Chalo, Bhagwan ko de deta hoon hai. Thik hai, Bhagwan ne diye, Bhagwan ko wapas kiye. Wo pure time Bhagwan ki baat karte rehte hai. Aise bhoat saare politicians mainne dekhe hai, jo saare din paisa banate hai, aur raat ko bhi, aur subhe utke pura wo havan wa vagaira karte hai. Wo bhi hai us temple mein, aise loog bhi lagte hai us temple mein. Okay? So, the whole concept of Bhagawan also, wisdom puts a question on that. Ki ye Bhagawan ka concept paida kaise hua? Kya hamare dar aur lalaj ka pratik hai ye? Kya hamare dar aur lalaj se paida hua hai ye? Aur isse kya nuksaan hote hai countries ko? Chanakya and Confucius have said, if your whole society is running towards the, uh, the mountain, the, to, towards the temple on the mountain, then the whole society may go down. Okay, that means it might become enslaved. वो कह रहे हैं, कहते हैं, चाणक्य के कहता है कि अगर आप ज़्यादा भगवान वगैरह के चक्कर में पड़े, और अगर राजा भी पड़ गया भगवान के चक्कर में, तो possible है कि आप बहुत जल्दी गुलाम कंट्री बन जाओगे, और हम बने, okay? So इन सारे सारी चीजों पे question mark लगाता है wisdom, because wisdom शोध करता है, वो विश्वास नहीं करता वो शोध करता है, वो प्रश्न पूछता है। Yes, any other question, please? Go ahead, please, sir. Uh, sir, you have spoken about uh, the relationship which wisdom has. Uh, can, can you have a uh, uh, yeah, mic, sir? So you have spoken about the relationship wisdom has with uh, knowledge. Um, what do you think is the relationship between wisdom and education? Do you think only the highly educated people or people who are not literate? Uh, they also tend to be wise and they also tend to give uh, correct suggestions and I just would like to know about wisdom and education, sir. Education definitely uh, helps you acquire knowledge and good application of knowledge is wisdom. If Knowledge is information, wisdom is transformation. Ed education helps you get that, there. And there are also many examples of people who are not educated, who are extremely wise. However, however, education comes with a side effect. What is the side effect of education? Can you tell me? What is the si side effect of education? Arrogance, beautiful. One is arrogance. Second is infallibility. Ki mai correcti hoon. Chahe mene thoda sa hi padha hai, lekin itni tivrata se padha liya hai, asi intensity se padha liya hai, ki mai sochta hoon, wohi sach hai. Okay? So, these are very important side effects of education which we should be aware of. As students and as teachers. So, as long as we are aware of these side effects, they reduce in their intensity. They stop taking, uh, they stop having the stranglehold they can otherwise develop on us. And then we should go for a wide type of education, not only read what we are saying, 
and what endorses what we are thinking, but also the other, other side, then we can uh, definitely go on the path of uh, wisdom through right informal education. Formal education, I do not think, brings great wisdom, okay, except the study of liberal arts. Uh, but otherwise, education, that means the, the learning, the desire to learn, ability to learn, surely can take you on the path of wisdom. Any other question? Yeah, there. Who's asking? Okay. No other questions? Yeah, go ahead. One more question here. Okay, one question, then first we'll take that. Yeah, go ahead, Akansha. So, what challenges you face while writing the book? Okay. I have written many books. I have written on Chanakya, I have written on Machiavelli, who is the uh, of Machiavelli for Moral People, etc. But my best book and the most popular book is called How a Good Person Can Really Win. The biggest challenge I, I uh, encountered in reading this, uh, in writing this book was it is very difficult to make the good person win. It required a lot of study, lot of research, lot of experiments, and study not only of competition in the corporate sector, etc. I got my finest in inputs from Mossad, from CIA, from FBI, because here competition is at a very high level state. In corporate sector, if I lose what I lose, I lose profits. Or I might lose my job. But in CIA and FBI and Mossad, if you lose, you will lose your life. Okay? So, uh, as I was making the book, in the book what I've done is, first of all, I've displayed all the games. I have uh, disclosed all the games which people play. How they lie, how they cheat, how they poach credit and so on. Then I have given antidotes for that. And then I have given those things which will help you become uh, strong, which will help you become powerful. So at, at different stages, I had different um, uh, different challenges. And I don't have time to discuss all those, but I will share one with you. Actually, there are three specific challenges which I faced. Sit down, please. I will share one with you. Okay. And this challenge came because after describing this man, this evil man, unprincipled man, I was thinking how I will handle him. Because he changes colors, he changes forms, and so on. And that is when I came across an excerpt from a book called Bone Identity. Bone Identity is a book written by Robert Ludlum. And I will tell you about this excerpt. Or is excerpt ko sunane ke baad, I will ask you a question. Okay? And this quiz is only open to those people who have not read my book. So anybody who has read my book, do not answer. Okay? So I will ask, I will tell you this little story and then I will ask you a question. And let me tell you, nowhere in the world where I have spoken, in the West or in the East, any audience has been able to answer this question. So if you you will answer this question, you will be the brightest audience that I have encountered so far. Okay. So, ab dhyan se sunna, aur baat nahi karna, aur kisi ko baat karni hai, to please baar kar le, aake fir wapas a jaye. So there is this man in the movie or book. His name is Jason Bourne. Jason Bourne is a CIA agent. He has been beaten badly by the mafia, assumed dead, thrown into the sea. But he doesn't die. His body is washed ashore and he is nursed to life by some fishermen. And he's fit, but he's lost his memory. All the time he is thinking only one question: who am I? One day he finds a microfilm. Uh, I mean, he finds a lump in his thigh, he makes an incision. He finds a microfilm there, which has a Swiss bank account number. 
So he thinks if I go back to the Swiss bank, I will be able to find out who am I because this is the missing link to my past. So he goes to that Swiss bank, it is a 20 story building in Switzerland. Goes to the teller on the ground floor and gives his uh, name, uh, gives his account number. So he says, what can I do for you Mr. Jason Bourne? So he, uh, he, he, he says, how much money is in there by account? He says, five million dollars. So he knows that he's a big man. And he knows that he cannot ask me, can you tell me who am I? I ask him. So he says to him, can I withdraw one million dollar? His idea is that if I withdraw such a big sum, somebody senior from the bank will meet me. When they meet me, then I'll be able to discover through the conversation who am I. So the teller says, sir, you have to go to the 20th floor for such a large disbursement. Please take the lift to the 20th floor. So he takes the lift, goes to the 20th floor. Meanwhile, the teller calls the mafia and says that that man you had said, if ever you, I, we, uh, he resurfaces, I have to inform you, so I am informing you and saving myself. Mafia immediately dis dispatches four sharpshooters to kill him in the bank. Two of them take position in the lobby and two of them go to the 20th floor and they wait at the reception next to the lift for Jason Bourne. Meanwhile, Jason Bourne has been given his money, but nobody out because of fear of the mafia has spoken to him about who he is. So he still doesn't know who am I. Okay. Anyway, he takes that briefcase, enters the lift. As he enters the lift, these two sharpshooters also with their, with their guns drawn, try to enter the lift. One he dispatches out of the enclosure with a kick, but the other comes in and now the lift door closes and a tussle for the gun in the assassin's hand starts between Jason Bourne and him. And as the lift is coming down and about to reach the lobby, Jason Bourne in a couple of lightning moves grabs that gun from that assassin's hand, puts it on his head. What is the first question he'll ask? Who am I? Louder, louder please. Anybody else? Why are you after me? Why are you after me? Anybody else? Who sent, to kill me? Who sent you to kill me? All the answers are wrong, but don't... Why are you killing me? Uh, no. <laughs> Anybody else? Who are, Who are you? Anybody else? All the answers are wrong, but don't feel bad. You are in the illustrious company of people who are very senior corporate uh, people as well as politicians and bureaucrats and police officers who have not been able to answer this question. You know what does he ask? How many men in the lobby? Where are they? That means he's saying how many partners of your are there in the lobby and where are they? Because the highest priority till five minutes back was to find out who am I? But now the priority has changed. Now the priority is to save my life. What is the point in finding out who am I if after 30 seconds they are all going to kill me? What is the point in finding? So the priority has changed. So the inquisition for the moment has changed. That means Jason Bourne is a professional. Have you understood this? Yes. Jason Bourne is a professional. And he can respond to changing priority. And I, from this study, I realized that if by training your mind, you can cha respond to cha changing priority like this, then why we cannot respond to that changing unprincipled man? We will respond to him. Okay? You got my point? So this is uh, the one of the challenges which I faced and uh, the inspiration I got. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Sir, please, please give the uh, microphone. Hello. Uh, sir, if you were not a writer, then what would you be? You know, 
I have asked this question of myself and I'll answer truthfully. I would have been either some leader, maybe not as big as Modi, but some leader, or I might have been a Don. <laughs> I have asked this question of myself, okay, so I, this is what I could have been. But I, perhaps I would have been some smaller leader, much smaller leader like Modi. Because I am very strongly inclined towards the virtuous side. Yeah. Go ahead. Any other question? Yeah, I was wondering that. Yeah. Dawn is normally not looked at towards with a more respect. It's more on evil side. So why leader is leader Dawn is leader in self as well. But it's not looked up as as such. You know, uh, in my view, uh, Kamleji just said to me, he's helping me, you know. So I'm getting some invigilator's help. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Narendra Modi is also a leader who's a dawn. In my view. Narendra Modi is a leader who is a dawn. Recently somebody reached him, a lady I know reached him and said, sir, about 15 days back, that sir, this person you have taken in Gujarat, he has a very bad reputation and he spoils our image. You know what he answered? He answered, Ghatot ka chrakshas tha. लेकिन वो पांडवों के साथ था धर्म के साथ कृपाचार्य और भीष धार्मिक लोग थे लेकिन वो अधर्म के साथ थे हमारे एक्स प्राइम मिनिस्टर मनमोहन सिंह ऐसा उन्होंने कहा भी धार्मिक आदमी थे लेकिन अधर्म फैला ये घटोत्कच धर्म फैलाएगा स्पीचलेस मतलब इफ यू हैव सीन दिस मूवी गॉड फादर ओके there is a lot of wisdom in this. And mafia, when I, when I studied Machiavelli, mafia and all, I had to study all this. So, mafia did not evolve as a bad institution. Mafia originated to protect the poor and innocent Italians from oppression. So, if you, if you study the code of silence of uh, mafia, Omerita. It is very similar to the Samurai Code, which is the most honorable code and which talks about strength and honor. Mafia is also talking strength and honor. Okay? But over time, this world and its practitioners got corrupted, and which is why it has got a bad name. Okay? So, yeah, go ahead. Your question, please. You got a question? Yeah, go ahead. Sir, I am immensely inspired by one quotation, uh, knowledge gives power, wisdom gives humility. So, would you like to throw some light on this? Yeah, is it superior to no wisdom, is knowledge superior to wisdom or both knowledge and wisdom, they are separate terms or which one is? I would say like this, that wisdom gives power and wisdom gives humility. Okay. I have seen so many knowledgeable people who were not humble or who were not socially graceful or not socially intelligent that nobody went to them for their knowledge. They were such wells where you could have drunk the nectar of knowledge but their arrogance or their rigidity had poisoned the well. So you can't drink from that well. So I feel knowledge which is mature, which is seasoned, which knows how to percolate itself, which knows how to behave in such a way that people will come to its well, is wisdom. And wisdom gives power, wisdom gives uh, humility. Thank you. Very good questions. We take a last one. Last one and then we sign off. She's kept the last one for herself. Okay. Second last one. Go ahead, please. You said that there are some times when in uh, Hindi mein you use the word adhan felt hai. Why do the wise men let that happen? They, it's, it, it is in their hands. Why do they let that happen? 
you know, two of the most wise communities have been the Jews and Indians. And a side effect of excessive uh, thinking, I uh, not wisdom, thinking is cowardice. So during the uh, during the genocide which happened against the Jews, there are cases where only one German soldier, one German soldier, rounded off 1,000 Jews, 1,000 men Jews, and took them alone to the concentration camp. Can you beat it? That means nobody, none of them, wanted to be the first person to strike the soldier because he felt that that may cost me, that may he may hit me back or he may kill me. Because of that, nobody moved. Indians also have become like that. Many wise people are like that. I'm not saying Indians are wise. Indians are one of the most unwise fraternity or community in the, in the history of mankind, as per my study, okay? <laughs> And your uh, very esteemed Mr. Mishra will tell you sometime that one of the big problems he is going to address of India or Indians in Gwalior, it is making of God. We have made such a God, 33,000 gods, that even when we want to come out of our lack of wisdom, it will be very difficult. Those temples and those bells and those artis and all will pull us back. But anyway, so the point is, why wise men allow lack of wisdom or bad people to flourish is because they don't take action. Because they are maybe cowardly or they are only thinking about themselves. They feel that the fire has not reached my home, so why should I try to extinguish it, extinguish it and all, so on. So it is because of the fact that they, or maybe they don't know how to fight, or maybe they are like my respected parents who are only talking, okay? You're getting my point? So, aane wale time mein aisa na ho, isliye yuddh karna sikho, pratisparda karna sikho, hoor karna sikho. Agar aap sikho ge, tabhi aap overpower kar pao ge, nahi to bura admi hamesha aapko buri patak maare. And another thing is that why these bad people flourish? Because the principled person has a lot of ego about his morality. Because of which he cannot team up with others. But the unprincipled person is greedy. And for he, he compromises his ego to his greed. Matlab uski ego wo niche rakh deta hai, greed upar rakhta hai. To us greed ko satisfy karne ke liye wo dostiya bhi banata hai, good bhi banata hai. और वो मारता है इसको इस अच्छे आदमी को क्योंकि वो तो अपनी ईगो में चल रहा है उसके साथ में कोई बचाने वाला नहीं है उसको Are you getting my point? So आज आप सब लोग ये सोचना इसके बारे में अगर टाइम मिले तो कि आप ऐसे मत बनना आप शरीफ बलवान बनना Good luck. Uh, what do you think is the you know impact of good and bad experiences on wisdom? Like a person can have a good experience, another person can have a bad experiences, you know, of the past. So what do you think? Do they impact differently, you know, on the wisdom level of the person or what? Experiences have a shelf life. For example, when I was a child, I was told not to touch uh, the electrical socket. Current mar dega. That was a right advice for that time. If I touched the electrical socket at that time, I would have got a current. Chance was, was there. But when I grow up, I have to erase this experience. Otherwise, I will not be able to utilize the miracle of electricity. So, Experiences do script your outlook. But we should also have an eraser to know which experience was uh, gave us a lesson 
or brought us success or failure in that milieu? Is the shelf life of that lesson over or is it still extending? And if it is over, we should be able to erase it. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. It was indeed a pleasure to hear from you. And I'm sure um, you know each one of us uh, here has gained a lot from you today. Um, thank you once again. Now I would request our honorable advisor, Professor Kamlesh Mistra, uh, to hand over the memento to our chief guest as a vote of thanks for such a wonderful session. Now I request all of you to come forward for a group photograph.